If my pencil sketch here didn't give it away, I've decided that my theme for May is going to be Disney. The colour palette I'm going to be using is for these five different colours of Tombos and then also black. So the colours I have are the yellow 205, orange 933, pink 755, purple 665 and then the blue 515. What I'm going to be doing in today's setup is actually doing all of my black outlining first and then going in at the end to add all the colour. Before we jump into it, just a reminder that any of the equipment I use in today's setup is linked in the description box below. As could be expected, for my black outlining I'm using the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. I've gone with the S size for the drawing outlines, but the M size for any grid ruling that needs doing. Similar to what I did in March, I'm also using brown paper bags for the headers on each page. In my March plan with me, I didn't actually show you guys how I made those, so I figured in today's video I'd give you guys a bit more information about how that works. So to start off with, I went and found a Disney style font and typed out the headers I needed to just in a single column grid on Microsoft Word. I made the column the same width as my journal, so each header would span the entire page. And I left a little bit of room underneath of the text, just so that I could rip the paper along the bottom. To prepare the paper bag, I roughly measured it against a piece of printer paper, cut it to fit, and then I used some washi tape to stick it to that paper. Then when it came to printing, I ran a test page through my printer first to figure out which way I had to put the paper bag paper into the tray to actually get it to print on the paper bag rather than on the printer paper. I, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So trialing a piece of paper through the printer to make sure I knew which side of the page it prints on so that I put my piece of paper into the printer tray correctly. Yeah. And when it came out of the printer, this is what it looks like. So we have that grid, which I can carefully cut along to get my straight edges. And then I ripped the bottom edge for decoration and put double-sided tape on the back. I hope that gives you guys a little bit more insight into how it works. Initially I was just going to draw out each of these headers by either mimicking or tracing the Disney font, but I felt it was going to be too time consuming and I really liked the paper bag trick from March. So here we have my monthly log, which is a calendar style as voted for by the InstaFam. For all my ruled boxes, I wanted these to have rounded corners, so I had to make sure I was careful to stop my ruling one square out from the corner. I am pretty impressed though that I didn't actually stuff that up. Instead, I decided to save my stuff up for the numbering on my calendar, where I missed the number 11. Not really too sure how I managed that, but as you'll see in a bit, it wasn't really a huge issue. Each box of this calendar is 6 squares by 6 squares, then it has an additional row of boxes on top to house the initial and number for each of the days. I've also given myself some room to have a small monthly to-do list on the left-hand side. In terms of the decoration on this one, I've gone for Tangled, which would probably be in my top 5 Disney movies if I were to make a list. Beauty and the Beast takes the top spot for me, and I know that Mulan and The Little Mermaid would be in the top 5 as well. Not sure about which other one I'd put in there though. Question for you guys, what are your top 5 Disney movies? I've kept my list to those released by Walt Disney Animation Studios, so films like Toy Story and Brave aren't contenders here. Mostly because if I expanded it to Disney, Pixar and other studios, it would be a huge miss trying to narrow it down to a top 5. As you can see, the tangled scene I've selected for this spread is the releasing of the lanterns while Rapunzel and Flynn Rider are on the water. This is one of my favourite moments and I really wish I was more artistic to better do it justice. Although the page is distinctly lacking in lanterns at the moment, I do come in and add those when I put colour on my pages. To add in the initials and the numbers for each day of the month, I'm going in with my Uniball Signo white gel pen. Onto my habits and steps tracker pages, for these I'm using drawings of Mulan and the Lost Boys from Peter Pan. The habit tracker I'm keeping pretty simple, similar to usual, it just has a vertical layout with a row for each day of the month. On the steps tracker however, I've changed things up to be a weekly line graph. So on this one I'm going to be laying down each week over the top of another so I can see if there are any weekly trends and how many steps I do. Each week has a colour designated to it and I'm using my Statler Triplus fine liners to do those. For the Disney characters from this spread onwards, each of these was traced in. 
I contemplated trying to draw them just from reference pictures, but it was pretty important to me to make sure I got the proportions right. So the easiest way to do this was just by tracing them. I am certainly not above cutting things out and just sticking them straight into my journal or tracing things. It would have taken me such a horribly long time if I was trying to do the drawings and titles freehand, and I know that for show sure, I would not have been happy with the results. The tracing though certainly worked out I feel. Along with the Disney drawings, I'm also putting in quotes from the related movies. For the Tangled Monthly Log we had Go, Live Your Dream, while on this page we have This Represents Discipline and This Represents Strength. You need both to reach the arrow which I thought was fitting for a habit spread which is normally related to goals. And then on the steps tracker side, I'm going to be having We're Following the Leader, just as that's the part of the movie that the drawing is from. After sticking in each of the headers and trimming the corners with my corner rounder, it's time to letter in that first quote. For the quotes, I'm using a combination of my usual all caps lettering, some cursive, and a serif version of my typical all caps letters. Adding serifs, or those small lines at the ends of each line, are an easy but effective way to change up an otherwise somewhat plain lettering style. I don't use them a lot myself, but I think I'm going to get pretty good use of them this May. The drawing I have here of the Lost Boys is the only Disney drawing that I have done as a silhouette. In the interest of having a video that was less than an hour long, I didn't want to have to draw out all of the finer facial details for each of the characters. I do however appreciate that from the profile shot you have here, you can tell who each character is though. For the steps tracker, I have the space on the right for a mini calendar, while the bottom rectangle is for the initials for each day of the week, and the leftmost rectangle is to write out the numbers which represent each thousands of steps that I've taken. So 1 being 1,000, 2 being 2,000, etc. As I mentioned before, the intention for this tracker is that I'll have each week being a line on a line graph. Each line will be colour coded to the week, which is the colour that I've used to list the week number on that mini calendar. After writing in my We're Following the Leader quote, and putting down the numbers for each day of the month on my habit tracker, it was then onto my two lines a day spread. This spread is really just a whole lot of line ruling. For each day of the month, I've given myself two rows of squares to write down some of the things that happened that day. Along the outer sides of the boxes, I've got four columns of squares to write down the initial and the number for each day of the month. This spread doesn't really have a lot of space for decoration, so to make it look a little bit more decorative, I again go in with my Statler Tri Plus Fine Liners to write down the numbers for the days of the month and I'm using the order of yellow, orange, red, pink, purple, blue. After the initials and numbers were in, I just stuck the header in along the top of the left page. Similar to what I did on the boxes of my monthly log and my trackers, for my two lines a day spread I've also coloured in the top bar of the box using my brush tipped Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. Given the lack of space for a doodle on this one, I instead opted for a quote along the top right of the page. This one's from The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and says, Life's not a spectator sport. If watching is all you're gonna do, then you're gonna watch your life go by without you. I thought it was a nice quote to include on a page, which is essentially gonna end up being a memory spread. For something a bit different to the usual, for May I've decided to drop my social media scheduler down to one page and I'm using the right hand page to write down my doodle prompts for the month. The typical list I do for these is up on Instagram now, and in the description box below there's a link to that one, as well as a link to my Disney Bullet Journal Pages Pinterest board. That's a mouthful. Disney Bullet Journal Pages Pinterest board. I don't think that sounds right. Anyway, it's in the description box below. <laughs> on this version of my social media scheduler, I have the regular section for my Instagram posting, and the one that I typically have for my YouTube schedule, but I've dropped the sections that I normally have for my Instagram story and Facebook posting down to a social media related habit tracker. The small remaining space at the bottom I've set aside for a growth tracker. Not that I really need one, because one, I have a yearly growth tracker in the front of my journal, and two, my follower count on Instagram in particular like a lot of other bullet journalers, 
has been going down for the past few months. It's a tad disheartening, but I know, or at least I'm hopeful, that this isn't due to the content I'm putting out. As I say in a lot of my videos, if you do have any ideas for things you want to see from me, I would love to hear about them. I want to make sure that I'm putting out content you guys are actually interested in, as well as stuff that I actually enjoy making videos about. For the headers in each of these boxes, I'm again using my Uniball Signo white gel pen. With my trackers and such drawn out, it's onto the decoration. For this spread, my decoration is from The Little Mermaid, so I have a picture of Ariel down the bottom here, and then the quote that I opted in for was, wish I could be part of that world. I thought this was fitting for a couple of reasons. One, this is where I have the list of all of my Disney movies, and I know that it was certainly a dream of mine to be part of a Disney reality. And secondly, on this spread I also have my stuff related to social media. I know that many, myself included, can end up comparing our lives to what we see on social media, and you and I both know that this isn't really a healthy thing to do, especially because the things people put on social media are done so through a filter. People are selective about what parts of themselves they show online, and I mean rightly so. As a general example, in the planner world in particular, people will happily show the parts of their planners that are aesthetically pleasing, and with props and backgrounds that convey a certain theme or message. I'm not exempt from this. I like the idea of a consistent social media feed, which is why I use a white background for my Instagram posts, and I do all of my filming at this desk. Another example of a filter would be my voice that I use in these plan with me's. I don't talk like this in real life. This is not my real life voice. I know that probably sounds a little silly, because I'm obviously the one who's doing this voiceover, but in day to day conversation, this is not what I sound like. My total off trackness aside, for the last spread in my setup, we have my mood tracker and a quote page. Now, on this spread, the drawing and the quote aren't a match. We have Cinderella and a quote from Hercules. For the mood tracker, I've drawn this to mimic the floor washing scene from Cinderella. So each bubble, or bubble cluster, is associated with a day of the month, and then when it gets to that day, I'll colour it in based on what my mood is for the day. The colour scale I have for this one is just using those Tombow Jewel Brush markers I selected at the start of my setup. So we have the blue for the best day, purple for a pretty good day, pink for an okay day, orange for a kind of meh day, and then yellow for a bad day. To draw out each of the bubbles, I'm using a Stetler Circle Stencil. Stetler Circle Stencil. Try saying that one five times fast. Stetler Circle Stencil. Stetler Circle Stencil. Nah. Anyway, this Circle Stencil is awesome, and if you don't have one, I would totally recommend it. After drawing out each of the bubbles, and counting them three times over to make sure I had enough, I put a small number beside each one to represent each day in May. In the bottom right corner I also put in a key, just so that if I wanted to look back on this one in the future, I'll know what each colour represented. For me personally, mood trackers aren't the most useful of spreads, but I do enjoy filling them in and having pages that are a little bit more decorative than just strictly functional. For the last page in this setup, we have the quote from Meg of Hercules, which says, I'm a damsel, I'm in distress, I can handle this. I thought this was a nice way to wrap up my monthly pages, as I know towards the end of term one, I was getting a little bit frazzled with everything I needed to do, and I feel this is going to be a nice reminder that I have done hard things and I can do hard things. As you can see, like the other spreads, I did pencil this one in first because I wanted to make sure that my spacing for everything was just right before I committed to the pen. With lettering especially, I do recommend this. It is not fun losing the game of lettering chicken. With all the black outlining done, it was time to add in some more colour. For this, I used my Tombow Jewel Brush markers, a paintbrush, and some water. I started by scribbling the Tombows onto a stamping block, and then used the paintbrush to pick up the colour and put it down on the page. For the Disney Castle here, I again used that colour order of blue through to yellow, but instead of starting again with blue after the yellow, I then went back in the opposite order. For each of these pages, I really just wanted to go with a touch of colour rather than full on colour pictures. So, for this one I painted around the outline of the Disney castle here, 
and I tried to make it look like the ink was bleeding towards the center. For the monthly log, as promised, I added in the lanterns and then added some color to the castle, the boat, and the bridge in the background. Initially I thought I'd add some orange around the yellow lanterns to kind of make it look like they glowed a little more, but after two of them I decided that it didn't really work and I ended up going over them with my Uniball Signo white gel pen once my filming was over. Here for Mulan, I was initially just going to leave it as the weights being coloured, but after filming I decided it needed a little more, so I also went in and added some blue to her uniform. For the Lost Boys, I did that same colour order from the castle, though I wanted to make it so that each character only had one colour in them. Mostly for simplicity, because I didn't really want it to look too busy. For Ariel, I added the colour of her hair, clamshells, and fins. You can see that I haven't necessarily used the canon colours in my decorations, but wherever possible I did try to make it a close match. So for example in this one, I've made Ariel's fins blue rather than the green that they are in the movie. On to our last spread, for Cinderella I added colour first to the key, then her hair, undershirt, cleaning cloth, water, and finally her apron. And then last but not least, I also added colour to the quote that we have on the right. Alrighty, and that's where we're going to leave it for today. So we have my cover page, my monthly log, my habits and steps trackers, two lines a day spread, my social media scheduler and doodles list, mood tracker and quote page. Thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already and wanted to, Feel free to subscribe to my channel to see the videos I release every Thursday and Sunday. I'll be back again on Thursday with another weekly plan with me, and so until next time, bye!